All right, so today we have a case of a uh, renal oncocytoma embolization. Next slide. Oh, it's Mona. So our patient is a 54-year-old female, and she actually has a history of chronic left back pain, and uh, incidentally was found to have a 12-centimeter upper pole uh, renal mass, and that was found on a renal ultrasound performed for her history of CKD. She also has a history of diabetes, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia. Uh, previously, she's had a hysterectomy for uterine fibroids, and her medications are listed. Next slide, please. So on review of system, uh, systems, she has a history of mild chronic left back and flank pain, which she didn't really know what to attribute that to. Uh, no history of dysuria, hematuria, uh, urinary tract infections, or uh, urinary retention. Her labs are significant for an elevated creatinine of 1.3. And on physical exam, she had no palpable masses. Next slide, please. So a CT scan performed after the initial ultrasound demonstrated a large left upper pole renal mass uh, with uh, low level enhancement uh, similar to the background kidney and a large scar, uh, central scar. Uh, so differential diagnosis for this was a RCC, a chromophobe variant versus an oncocytoma. So next slide, please. She underwent a percutaneous renal biopsy which demonstrated an oncocytoma. Next slide. So in summary, uh, she's a 54-year-old female with chronic uh, mild back pain and found to have this large renal oncocytoma. Uh, so the treatment options for this patient is imaging surveillance, given that it's a benign entity, uh, although she is having symptoms uh, with back pain. Uh, also, we could perform embolization or uh, partial nephrectomy with uh, urology. So the plan for her is to perform a renal angiogram and embolization. Uh, to decrease bleeding risk, uh, decrease the tumor size, and hopefully avoid a partial nephrectomy in the setting of her CKD. All right, so if you, if you don't mind focusing on the wrist, let me show you where we are right now. Uh, we haven't taken any pictures yet, and we haven't given any contrast, but we're pretty much all set up. Can we go to that screen where we see the, the wrist here? Yep. Okay, good. See it, so. All right. So in the wrist, I have a 5-6 slender, which we're all familiar with. This is a 6 French sheath. I'm using a guide catheter. So what we did first, we just hit play on that run there. Let's go to the, the first run. Uh, Paul came down the arch with a Sarah radio 110 centimeter with a Benson wire, as we would typically do for most of these cases, and just flopped right down the arch without much difficulty. So not a challenging arch, particularly in you know, middle-aged younger women, not a problem. Uh, once we got down there, we puffed just to see the location of the renal, uh, but we didn't do any run. And then we switched out for a uh, six French, 110 centimeter Boston Scientific runway guide catheter. We have it hooked up to a Guardian, and then we have a flush line, which we can do runs through. What shape did so you use? Uh, this is a JR4. Okay. Uh, I like the JR4 for these downgoing renals, as you can see on the images here. This is a downward angle. Uh, it sort of has like a cobra shape. It, it works really well for this. And so we have we have a uh, contrast syringe loaded up to the sideline. So I'm going to start off with a DSA. We're going to do a hand run here. Wow. Okay. So I had a long conversation with her urologist, and he has no desire to operate on her at all, uh, given that she has some CKD. Uh, so the plan here, and we can talk about this as, if anybody's done this before, because I actually haven't embolized an oncocytoma before, um, is to try to decrease the potential bleeding risk and maybe decrease the tumor size uh, if she is a candidate for surgical resection in, in the future. It will make it easier for a surgical resection. I have an, a sniper catheter here because I'm not sure how we're going to embolize this, but my plan was initially to use Onyx just because I don't want her to have too much pain after. We had a long conversation about what to expect after embolization of a mass is big, and she had a lot of concerns about pain. So I thought maybe Onyx would be a reasonable option. Um, let's just do a yeah. quick puff here and just see if we're in the right se segment. So what we're doing now is we're actually just taking a picture right outside uh, this vessel, and so we're trying to get a sense of where we are. And so this is a lot easier than, I think, pulling the wire out of the microcatheter, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. We're going to inflate the balloon here and see if we can get a, a better sense of the flow here. It's very... Uh, we could probably go a little bit more. Why don't we take it up a tiny bit more? That's interesting. The flow looks a lot different than what it what it looked like initially. 
Well, it's probably oh. the multiple seaters, right, coming around. So. Yeah, so we might have to pull this back a bit. Um, back into yeah. Main yep. We're too distal, so let's pull. Let's take the balloon down and pull it back. I want to. I want to deliver this from a spot where we can do almost the entire uh, vessel with this one uh, microcatheter, if we can. So, Aaron, I guess my question for you is, with Onyx, obviously the risk of bleeding in the future is going to go down because you're going to have blocked up the blood supply, but you're not necessarily getting distal penetration, so you may not get a significant shrinkage in the mass, and part of her natural pain response that she seems to have is she's presenting with back pain because she has a large oncocytoma, so do you think you're actually going to get a good amount of atrophy to relieve that symptom for her? Well, your guess is as good as mine, Nora. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think one of the reasons why we decided to use the balloon here is that maybe we'll get more penetration distally. But right now, I don't know that we see. Um, at least I haven't seen a run yet where I think I'd be able to penetrate distally into the the center of this thing. Um, we have the DMSO ready to go. I think I'm going to get the onyx ready. Actually, Blue, you want to grab some onyx? Hmm. Let's start with 18, and we'll see if we can get the float out. So the other the other problem that I see. Um, is we're a little bit distal to that upper branch. So um, I might want to pull back a tiny bit here. This whole vessel is supplying it. So why don't, why don't we pull back and, and we'll take the balloon down, we'll pull back and we'll try to get that other branch. I think when we inflate the balloon in here, it jumps forward a tiny bit. Yeah. And then we'll start injecting the onyx. So I think what we just did is we pulled back and it popped into the other branch. So let's see. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Let's take it down. We'll just put it back up. So this shouldn't be that difficult, but we're just trying to get it into that ideal spot where we think we can get the whole lesion because I'd rather not have to put another microcatheter in once we start injecting. And I think the other other thing that comes in the, into play here is we, we will – let's grab the wire, Blue, if you have it. Um, once you start injecting onyx, the microcatheter is sort of not useful for a second embolic injection if you move it into a different position. So I spend a little bit of time trying to get it to where I need it to be perfectly, and then then we start the embolization. Oh, the other thing that we always forget, right? I mean, we have a guide catheter. Yeah. So let's grab 10 cc's of contrast, and we'll position it while Blue puffs the catheter. I'll move it around. And then Paul will inflate the balloon, so we have uh, three people doing this. Three hands, three sets of hands. <laughs> Nora looks very pleased here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna we're gonna embolize from here. Let's All see right. what happens. Run DMSO. So I'm I'm gonna inject a little bit of DMSO here. The dead space. Point four two. Okay. Run. Yeah, do a run. Why I'm injecting. That's the guide. This thing is gigantic. Yeah. You have all those medial branches. Yeah, so we're probably going to have to do another injection at some point. Now, we're going to inject very slow in the beginning because right now we're only injecting DMSO. So it's, I think one of the tricks with Onyx is to go very slow, 0.1 cc's a minute. So slower than anybody ever wants to inject. Um, because now we're just injecting the DMSO, which causes a lot of spasm in these vessels. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take another wire. Um, do you have another fathom? I'm going to put the I'm going to put the guide up, and that way we don't have to move the move the microcatheter. Can I get another fathom? Put a nice curve on that blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to track the guide over the fathom, and then I'm going to use the same microcatheter. And we'll see if that works. Yep. There you go. Nice. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let's keep injecting the onyx. We going. There we go. Much better. But we need more onyx. A lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I like this. This is perfect. That was not. That uh, that didn't take that much. It was two vials. We were done. Um, you know, we penetrated fairly distal. Let's I'll show you guys the run here. We got about two thirds of it. We found this other capsular branch, which is coming off the aorta, 
Yeah. Um, there's another feeder that's sort of very proximal off the renal, which I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm probably going to have to bring her back and stage this because. Um, are you going to go after that capsular branch? I mean, we're going to try for like a second while you guys are here. Okay. And if not, then we're going to do it all uh, in a stage because I really want her to be comfortable after this. I don't want her to have a tremendous amount of pain because that was sort of her big, big issue with this. So you're going to open up another is, sniper? Is or are you gonna... <laughs> no, I have a, um, you know, I have a ProGrade 2.4 here at 150. Okay. And Paul is just going to probe around that origin um, a little bit. Let's see if we can find it. Did you uh, use the balloon, Aaron, to uh Yeah, the balloon was you. very helpful because it prevented the reflux more than anything. So we yeah. got pretty aggressive there at the end. You can see it. Yeah, that's um, great. And we were able to get a little bit, you know, I would have preferred a little bit more distal, but, you know, again, it's the best that we could do. Oh, look, we got the SMA. <laughs> Not... So one of the great, you know, we were talking about this before. We actually used the, the guide catheter as to sort of buttress the, the sniper as we were pulling it out of the, the renal artery so we weren't, oh, wait, that's, oh. I think that's it. Nice. That's it, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, love, I love particles, but, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm, we're going to switch to glue so we can embolize this entire vessel. I guess the only question that I have for you guys is what concentration should we use? I mean, you want distal penetration, so make it thin, right? So, yeah, I would use. What do you? Yeah, 80, Paul says 20. five to one. Five to one. I'm most comfortable. Oh, really? I would do like eight. <laughs> eight to one. What did you say, nuts. Ricardo? Yeah, eight, eight to two, or nine to one, probably. Um, but for people who are not familiar with glue, the most important thing is we don't let it polymerize in the microcatheter. So, uh, what, I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to flush it with a three cc syringe of D5 water, and then we're going to flush it with a few syringes of uh, D5 water in a 1cc format, and then we'll clear the blood out. We'll load the catheter with about, I think, 0.5 cc's of glue, which is going to, Paul's mixing it up right now, 5 to 1, because uh, I sort of split the difference in what you guys were saying. And then um, we'll inject it with 1cc medallions of water to, to, to let it flow distally. I'm going to just see if I can aspirate. So, the, you know, this is also what we were talking about before with the, with the radial axis and glue, or any embolic, really. But glue probably most important. So we want to make sure we don't have any, if you guys can see my hand here, I'm actually sucking out a full 20 cc syringe of blood because sometimes, and I'm going to bleed it a little bit, because sometimes there's glue in the catheter that you're not aware of. And so I'm just making sure. So it's really important to do that. Um, and then we're going to do a little, a little run here. And then we're going to pull the catheter out. So, Aaron, if you're Kinked. done with your run here, I'm going to go back to room three. Yeah, we are done, and we're going to set up for the next case in two. Okay. So I really appreciate everybody on the panel uh, changing my mind about what we were going to embolize with. It was, it was definitely very helpful. So thank you, everybody.